Okay, welcome to our last lesson in the uh, first unit of data management, and we're going to be talking about the number of roots. It's kind of a kind of a neat uh, a neat probability strategy that it doesn't really relate to the other ones until maybe in the second unit, and uh, but it's kind of a it's kind of a fun uh, fun way to go about probabilities. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, so here's a warm up question that that really is gets to what we have to do here is the number of roots. Uh, if you were to put a chip in the E slot, so that's right in the middle, uh, that's where you maybe want to put it because you see like E prime down at the bottom has the $10,000 prize. How many ways would it be uh, for it to land in the middle slot? Um, and what would the probability be? So you can think about that. Um, it, it's, it's pretty challenging, but like if you can think about that, it, it'd be kind of neat to see if you can get it. So I'll just keep talking about it. So the way we actually do this is we, we come out with one way to put it in the E slot. Um, then there's one way for it to like hit that peg and go to here. And there's one way, way for it to hit that peg and go to here. So just boom, boom, and it's one way. And so then there'd be one way for it to fall down this way. It just It would have to go straight. And so there's one way to go here. And there's actually two ways to get here. So you, see, you can hit this peg and then hit that peg and end up here. Or you could hit this peg and end up there, and then you and then you could slide all the way down. For those of you guys that have seen this in a three uh, U math, like you start to see what the pattern is that starts to develop, and it is Pascal's triangle. So you would have seen this in grade eleven university math, um, but if not, if you took three M, then that's fine. Uh, but what what we're saying is, if there's two ways to get here, and there's one way to get here. That means that there must be three ways to get here. Like this is one way, and then there's another way here, and then a third way here. And so we, if we just add up these numbers that are above it, we get there. And so if we continue that way all the way down, you can kind of slow this down if you want to, or pause it. Um, we see eventually, and here it's a little bit tricky, like because there's actually no left slot. It's just coming from the, it's coming from the top to here. And here it's only coming from here, so there's nine. Uh, it's not like there's ten. You don't add another one because you can't get here. Um, but if we keep going like that all the way down, we, to get to the E slot, there's finally 924 ways. And the probability would actually be out of the total number of ways to reach this bottom row. So it's 924 out of 4,044, which is about 23%. The interesting question would be like, if you did this again, I could leave that for you. Would it be better if like we put it in another slot or is that the highest percentage we could get? Uh, Cause that's really just telling people uh, that play Plinko on the price is right. You, you got to throw it in the one that's most likely. So if you got five throws, you're likely to get one of them. You, you expect to get one of them in there. So I know that when there are multiple ways to get from a source to a destination, I can count these ways by applying the same logic that is used to generate Pascal's triangle. So let's see another example. As Again, it's just kind of like a puzzle. It, it's more for games and for real life, but, um, but we will see a, a route question as well, or root question, or however you say it. For the checker B piece below, if it can't jump the X, but it can jump the plus. Uh, what is the probability that the piece takes a random route to the top, only traveling diagonally and jumping over the plus piece? So the first thing you need to decide is how many ways to get to the top row, and then how many ways go through that plus piece. So there's one way to get here, and one way to get there. One way to get here, and two ways to get here. Uh, one, two. One way to get here. Three, three. And we can't, we can't actually go there because there's somebody there, so we jump over it. Um, three ways to get here because you're not coming from this side. There's almost zero here. Uh, so there's six ways to get here. And zero ways to get there. We could, it's helpful to actually put a zero there. And one way to get here because we can come, like we, we come from this side. So nine here, six here. That's where the zero will help. Uh, it's just from there. And then one way here, because this is zero plus one. And one way here, because you can almost think of this as a zero too. 
nine ways to get here. Zero is seven. Uh, two ways to get here. Nine ways to get here. Seven, nine, and two. So if you add these ways up, the random route, there would be that number of cases. So there'd be 27 ways to get to the top. Now, if you actually had to go through that plus sign, what we do is we ignore all the rest. We can almost put zeros on the ones that have gone too far, but we can see that like you have to go through this plus sign. So there's actually only one way to get here now because this would be not possible. Um, there's zero ways to get here through the plus sign. You notice you can't go backwards. Um, that means there's one way to get here and it's just through this one because you can't come in from this side. One plus two is three ways to get here. Uh, the two, all of the routes for the two have gone through the plus sign, so they're good. And then uh, two here as well. Um, so in total, there are one plus three plus two, so the little dashes are the new numbers. We could put like zeros on all of these to show that we can't go through any of these points. Um, but we have to go through this one, this way. So N of S is the 27, N of A is the 0, 1, 3, and 2, and so the probability of A is 22%. So the probability that you're going to go through the plus sign a random route is 22%. Uh, blocks example. So this is where like you've got um, a city block, and so some of the blocks may be doubled, so a building is here, and you can't go through the building, and here as well. And so you got to pay attention to where the lines are, but then you've got, like, you can travel south and uh, east uh, to get to the end. But you can't go through the guy with the glasses, this suspected cool guy that maybe gives you a hard time. Um, so we want to find out the, the probability that we're taking a random route through the city and uh, running into the guy with the glasses. Okay. And so, again, we kind of draw those lines. And so there's only one way all the way down here because you, you're not going to go backwards, um, so you're going to be walking south and east. And then Pascal's triangle kind of picks up, and there's no real change uh, until we get to this point here, where now we can't go through. Okay, There's actually only five ways to get here because we can't come from this direction. Um, so that's where a lot of people will make a mistake, because they won't sure what, what to do is the number just kind of carries down. It's almost like there's only five ways to get here. So there's the same five ways to get here. It's just one more dash. So you got 11 and 18. Um, so we're trying to find out the, all the ways down to the end, not just through the guy with the glasses uh, to do probability. So we've got to find out N of S first. And so then we can continue on with our Pascal's triangle. That This row is kind of normal. Um, this row is kind of normal, just adding up. And then this one, um, again, it's pretty normal too. It's just like 35 and 6. This 15 doesn't go anywhere. Um, and so we end up with 559 routes to the end. So now if we want to go through a guy with the glasses, what we do is we, we do a direct way where we have to go through the guy with the glasses. And so we're going to just find out how many ways we can go there. There's actually no ways here because if we go through that way, then we're already too far to get to the guy with the glasses. We can't, we'd, we'd have to go down here and back up. So we put a zero there. And there's actually zeros all the way down. And here as well because if we go that way, then we've gone too far. And we can't go through the guy with the glasses unless we backtrack. So we put a zero there. Um, I put a zero here, although there should be seven ways, because again, we don't want to. We want to go through the guy with the glasses. Put a zero there, because we would have gone too far. So there's two ways here, but then there's no ways without with going through the guy. Uh, we can still go there and still meet him, but we can't go down anymore. So 11 and 18. Um, we can't go here. There's only really this way. Here is 18, and then 18 again. So there's 18, and there's 36 ways, because if we come from uh, 
one side or the other. There's there's 18 plus 18 ways to get there, which is 36 total. And so in the end, we've got 54 ways to get uh, to the guy with the glasses. And so the probability is 54 to 559, so 10%. Another way to do this, because like it is a little bit confusing to, to, to put these zeros down, uh, but that, that is a really good way to do it. Um, so just put the zeros where you would have gone too far, is do the indirect method. With the indirect method, we actually start with the zero. So we want to find out the number of ways to go through the guy with the glasses. And so... Um, so we're actually going to do the opposite. And so we're going to do everything normal except instead of going through here, we're going to put a little zero there. So that number is already decided. And then we do Pascal's triangle like we did the first time, just kind of ignoring going too far, but then recognizing that when you have the zero, that number is only 36 and 44. And then you just kind of continue on that way. Um, and in the end, you get 505 ways. And so 505 minus the, the, the 559, or subtracted from the 559, is the 54 ways. And that's the same probability. So that's another strategy you can use. You just start by like saying where you can't go um, or where, where you need to go as the backwards case. So a couple examples, and I just added some uh, questions for number 9 and 10. And I put some partial solutions on here uh, so you can take a look back through this.